BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Buddy, question one, question two, any other business, defend the indefensible, and we're done. I'm Colin Murray, this is Fighting Talk. <laughs> Right, here's uh, the crack. Uh, We will be on from now until quarter past 12. We're delayed because of the Australian Open. Uh, If you're heading to Accrington Leeds, that's now being pushed back as well. That won't kick off until 10 to 1 and so on and so on throughout the day. Uh, if you're watching Britain's Got Talent tonight, that'll go to <laughs> nobody's. Nobody's taking a hit here, apart from us. Everything else is on time. That's that's where you know where you are in the pecking order. Now it is 2023. This is season 20, show 23. So uh, a little bit nerdy, but the last time that happened was never and never will again. Mind blowing, right? Absolutely. Absolute mind blowing. Next. <laughs> Now the excitement of that's over, let, let's get on with the programme. Uh, someone today is making her first appearance on the show. Someone's making her 177th. And I already like the person making their debut more than the person who's coming on for 177th time. But first up, a six-show veteran. Uh, still searching for his first fight and talk win, uh, but he, he has never came last. Now, a few seasons ago on FT, I would have done an obvious gag here. So I'll just give you a couple of seconds of silence. Just put your own guy in there. Yep, from the Mur, it's John Cross. How are you, mate? Very good. good. Lovely to be with you. Where are you off to after? You're always off somewhere. What football match are you no, going to No, no, no. I'm, I'm at Brighton, Liverpool tomorrow. So right. looking forward to that one. My kickoff hopefully won't be delayed. Nice. If you're not going to game on Saturday, do you just sit at home and brood in a, in a solitary armchair in a bed sit? <laughs> no. Do you know what I mean? With the lights off and a bottle of whiskey? No, just put, on the, game. Just put on the tent and watch all the football. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Right. On for a 12th show now. He's a uh, multi sport presenter with one of this show's greatest laughs. In eight of his last ten Instagram posts, he's either been in a tight t-shirt or topless, which is just the way I like it. Yes! David Alorcas here. How you, mate? Oh, man, I'm fantastic. You know, I actually flew in this morning, right? No for way. This show. Yeah, 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 I did. I just from flew where? in. From Ghana. <gasps> I've, been in, I've been in Ghana the last month. Right. Yeah. Living yeah. the dream, having a good time out there. Well, you could have stayed an extra day by the time we got on air. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? I know, right? <laughs> could have caught that later flight. <laughs> straight, straight from the airport. Straight, 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 straight Love in. that, love that. And were you in like a really big queue at uh, customs? Did you drop the old fight and talk? Did oh, you yeah. Drop yeah. It yeah. yeah. Drop I was like, listen, listen. I'm, <clears throat> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing Colin yeah. Murray. In a, yeah. You know, like like you I seen a... in Crocodile Dundee when you walk across the top of everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, yes, you must make fighting talk. <laughs> yeah, people, people were pushing me out. You know what I mean? Pushing me straight through, <laughs> through customs. On customs. Just get, it's all right. The tennis is on. You've got time. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Right. That was the voice of our newbie. She's a comic Leeds fan and importantly, considering the date, host of the BBC Transfer Gossip Daily podcast. Today, she not only becomes Fight and Talk panellist 388, but also now number one in alphabetical order ever, taking that prestigious crown from Rebecca Adlington. And you thought the whole 2023 thing was nerdy. You haven't seen anything yet. Maisie, how are you? I'm I'm better now. I've overtaken Rebecca Adlington. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the only way you ever could in anything. (laughs) That is literally it. Purely in alphabetical (laughs) sense. Sure. Right, finally, uh, a man who made his FT debut when Daisy was nine, <laughs> David oh. was 13. Who's Daisy? And did I say Daisy? Yeah, Sorry. You did. <laughs> Daisy. Wow. Right, hold on a wow. second. Right, you're a Maisie wearing a Daisy jacket. Oh, okay, yeah, right? no, I'll let you off. You can't we'll do that to an off. Irishman. Yeah, no, that, right, okay. that is as confusing as you can, right, you yeah, can that's be. Fair, that's fair. Right, come on. Uh, uh, that's Rue McGuigan. I was going to say John's 56, which he's not. <laughs> Sorry. It was very funny. Sorry, and Daisy spoiled it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Greg Brady, obviously. You all right, Greg? Huh? Yeah, thanks for uh, pointing out my longevity. I am the only 12-year-old ever to be on Fighting Talk. I know you've gotten the show more inclusive over the last couple of decades, Colin. It used to be a bunch of old 62-year-old white men when the show started. But I was 12, and I did make Defend the Indefensible yes. that first uh, run. Um, I did. I had a, 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 a very funny story about Greg being a fickle sports fan, uh, which I can't tell because we don't have time, but very funny. 
What a shame. Three days. <laughs> great tease, Colin. Really, really. You sound like a radio veteran. What a it's great tease. tease. It's, that, <laughs> it's, that, that. it's that Bengal story from the other night. It was shocking. <laughs> it's so funny, though. It's so You'd great. You'd be a great DJ. Right? I'd love to play you this song, but I won't. Right. You know why he's got, like, eight football teams? Like, nobody, like, in fact, like, eight football teams, right? I'm going to tell it. I don't care. Right? <laughs> so he, he's the same in everything. He comes on my night time show, my weeknight show, every Wednesday, talk about American sport. So at the start of the, the the, the American football players, we had to pick our Super Bowl finalists, right? So he gave it the big sell for the Bills and the 49ers. And I went Chiefs and 49ers. And uh, so, so this week, I'm like, there you go. I win because my two teams are left in. You lost, lost the Bills. He went, yeah. So anyway, he does the preview of the conference championship games this weekend. You can hear them live on Five Life. Um, five Life Sports Extra. And then he goes, I'll stick with my, my pick, the Bengals. He never picked the Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> they, they literally just knocked out his pick. And From the made, start of the regular like, season, Colin. <laughs> From the start of the regular season. <laughs> that that I, I made an adaptation. <laughs> yeah, I made a right it. turn. When the, yeah, there's, but, a lot of, there's a lot of people that picked Liverpool to win right, the Premier right. League who have changed oh their God. picks in the last oh six God. weeks, Colin. <laughs> Three weeks before, I asked you if you, yeah. pick, you picked the Bills who were on a collision course with the Bengals. You can't then go back to who you picked six. Well, I've never seen that. you so angry. <laughs> you didn't ask my frothing. September pick before the season right. even started. He's remarkable. Like, he will literally say, after this weekend, I'm going to stick with my pick the Chiefs. Like, that's what he's going to say. He's right, picked them at some point. <laughs> that's all that counts. I'll do anything for love. I won't uh, do that. <laughs> right, three more days until February. Who in sport has had a, a dry January? Uh, John? Oh, blimey. I wish I'd been on a dry January this yeah. week. Let me tell you. Cristiano Ronaldo, for me, yeah. he's got no choice in Saudi Arabia. Had the driest January, but also the richest, yet to score for Al Nasser. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, he's on a slow one. You say that like Ronaldo has an alcohol problem. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, he's known for being a boot. He's not like George Best. It's not like you're going, oh, he's going to really struggle and he's so unfit. He's yeah, going to really struggle. Yeah, all, those milli- all those millions. Oh, yeah. would make anyone struggle. That's why Frank Worthington never played in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> um, David? Uh, I'm going, Joe Gile- Felix has given himself a dry January from yeah. football. Ooh. You know what I mean? <laughs> Brought in for 24 million euros for six months. Yes. No goals, only 58 minutes of play, and that red card equates to about 10% of that 24 oh, million. That's yeah. Bleak. yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about that? Uh, right, Maisie, your first ever answer on Fight Talk. Have a point. Uh, I think uh, who's had the driest January? Uh, it's my beloved Calvin Phillips. Yes. Formerly beloved. Uh, <laughs> Calvin Phillips, I should say. I, I, listen, the guy, the guy went to City, which I'm still not over about, only to be called fat by Pep Guardiola. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as if dry January is not sort of tough enough for all of us. He's now had to go. Yeah. All right, I've got to cut back on the food, and I'm, I'm probably the bit. You can't be, you can't be trimming your diet and then be going out for pints every night. So he's probably had uh, a very dull one, hasn't he? Shows the difference between Leeds and Manchester City, doesn't it? Like Bielsa literally had a poster of Calvin Phillips, saying that's what you're aiming for. That's yeah. what you're aiming for. <laughs> That's it's the Sturdy Dallas. Get that fit. Get that fit. You know what I mean? Uh, right, Greg, who's had the well, driest January? I think it's been a rough month for... I, I know I couldn't sleep, I couldn't drink, I couldn't do anything if I was an Australian Open organizer. They yeah. just had a woman from Belarus who lives in Miami, Florida year-round, by the way. They invited her to the tournament. She won. They can't even put her flag up. They're trying to keep their fans out with all their flags. So she wins the women's side. Yeah. And we all know what's going to happen in the next 12, 14 hours. <laughs> Novak Djokovic, who they kicked off the continent a year ago, is going to win his 20 <laughs> So for Wimbledon, for the U.S. Open, I mean, who are you supposed to invite anymore? Both these things, sort of COVID policy and the war in Ukraine, they both intersect and it's... It's made a mess. for t- They're also really disappointed to delay fighting talk. You can bet they're talking about this in <laughs> Melbourne right now. They are. They, they didn't want an 11 9 third yeah. set, Colin. No yeah. way. Yeah, absolutely. Right, question two. You, you can tell them, Roshin. Um, uh, it comes from the <laughs> listeners. Uh, jump on the social media. You can put your question on there, and then maybe that you can come on the show, or, or maybe not. Uh, question two comes from Tom Garland. You've been here before. I have, yeah. Right, so because you're why why is it night train Guns and Roses? Is it um you must work on the trains? Is that what it is? I do, yeah. I'm, right. I'm a train driver. I just started when I last played you, and I'm, I'm a proper one now. Nice. So yeah, that's brilliant. You were training. That's right. Um, why did we not give you like somewhere over the rainbow or something like that with a second name like Garland? It was a missed opportunity. I apologise. I apologise. Um, right. What's your question, train driver? The question is: uh, the other night, the Forest players 
ran over to the Manchester United fans and gave it the old Ronaldo see you Drinker. celebration mm. before having their goal promptly ruled out for offside by the yeah. VAR. Yeah. So my question is, who in sport has been left with egg on their face? Right, there's more egg to go about now, yeah. Tom, because of the VAR. There's a lot of egg flying about on faces, so it's a timely question. Maisie, what are you thinking? Uh, well, I've, I've gone for something that happened in the snowboarding at the 2006 Olympics in Turin, if you remember this, Lindsay yes. Jacob Ellis. Do you yes. remember when they were going round and she, she, was a, she was a good few feet ahead from the, from the finish line and she started celebrating, doing these little tricks and jumps and absolutely stacked it and everyone overtook it. Thankfully, though, <laughs> she got retribution, didn't she? She finally got the gold, uh, the most recent one. But I remember yeah. they showed a clip of it and I was like, oh, God, that's... That's 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 playing on your head forever, right. isn't it? You can't be moonwalking until you broke the tape, Not exactly. You know, it's just a golden rule. <laughs> uh, David, what have you got? Hello, Tom. For me, it has to be Chris Eubank Jr. Listen, he rolled up to that announcement press conference uh, for his fight against Liam Smith in a KFC jacket. Other fast food chains are available, of course. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't is, want a jacket, is, though, with the logo you know, on. You know what I mean? It's a bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why is a kernel on your back? Who knows? Anyway, he took absolute <laughs> smack that. about having to only be at 50% to beat Liam Smith. And then he was doing Bambi on ice yeah. when he got knocked out in the fourth round for the supposed best chin in boxing. <sighs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Good answer, good answer. Egg on face. Greg, where are you going? Crack an egg. Probably the most well-known bad caddy on the pro golf tour, and it was Ian Woosnam's caddy. Mm. Guy named Miles Byrne. Woosnam's four shots back of David Duval at the 2001 Open Championship, and he shows up with an extra driver in the bag. You've got one job. I guess you got two jobs. You got to walk around and, and go. Yeah, just does seven that one job. This one. But he packed. He's got multiple Cuddy's jobs. loads of jobs. It's really important. He packed the job. Well, one is get to the course on time, which he didn't do two weeks later. He was eventually sacked, but he gave Ian Woosnam an extra driver. Yeah. So Woosnam was carrying 15 clubs, not 14. We've all done that, but we're not playing for for the, the Open Championship. So yeah. he gets a two-stroke penalty. Everybody remembers that video of Woosnam throwing the club across the tee box. Ooh. So two weeks later, he was sacked for sleeping in after a night at the pub. Yeah. Um, and Woosnam had a 7.38 a.m. tee time. I know the feeling. Oh, know it. John. 1993 Super Bowl, I'm going. If you haven't seen it, you've got to look it up. It's sensational watch because the Dallas Cowboys against the Buffalo Bills. Leon Lett closing in on a touchdown, ready to celebrate. He just thinks he's over the line. He's taking it for granted. Oh, no. Ball just Damn. just there. He's ready to, to, to go touchdown when suddenly Don Beebe nicks the ball and it was all over. The Cowboys win anyway, but what an absolute... I mean, it was a Devon Lock moment. Uh, Tom Garland, three bonus points as we come to the end of the track. What are you doing? There is nothing better than a loud mouth getting their come up and so it's got to be David's answer. There you go. Well, David was already a point in the lead. That gives him a four-point lead. Everybody else has got ten points. Lots of love, Tom. Thank you. Thanks, Polly. Love you. Lovely. Love you. Right. Uh, next is all about this. Tarkovsky dives back in. Back to all Bowen. And Bowen has got a second goal. Bowen arriving inside the six-yard area from close range. That now gives them a vital cushion in What's next for Everton? What's next for Frank Lampard, John Cross? After eight managers in the last six years, it has to be a revolving door at the training ground for Everton to let them in and out much quicker, frankly. I mean, let's hope Sean Dyche gets a bit of time, doesn't he, really? Because if there's a match made in heaven at the bottom of the Premier League, I think Sean Dyche lifts, it does it, really, and he'll lift them, and he'll lift them for Frank... I think it's a trip to his tailors, actually. Mm. Is there a more eloquent, elegant man in, in sort of in the Premier League era than Frank Lampard? I absolutely love the fella. So what happened mm. to, to his wardrobe at, at West Ham last week? The Fell apart. Dodgy, dodgy beanie. Well, how are you going to yeah. inspire people yeah. there like that? But actually, do you know what? He's going to be back in our TV studios very soon. I think. Exactly what Everton fans dreamt of when they got the uh, multi-millionaire new owners. Dates at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yes. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> uh, right, Maisie, what is next? Well, I, th I think the fact they've gone with, with Deitch, and it was between Deitch and Bielsa, mm. I think we might just see a repeat of last season and it'd be a kind of, uh, uh, well, Ever Everton, hopefully, uh, will end up in a sort of last point battle against Leeds and thankfully will win by the skin of our yes. teeth, perhaps. Uh, for Frank, I'm thinking a sort of Prince Harry autobiography <laughs> type thing where he, he berates living in the shadow 
of uh, the other Chelsea managers and the other Everton managers and how it was never going to be. From America? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's got to move there. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Him and Christine Blakely. <laughs> <laughs> move, to, move to California. <laughs> What's that area? I can't remember. Montecito. They're going to move yeah. to Montecito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, Prince, jo- Prince Charles. King Charles ain't going to be happy about this. No. Maybe he's opened up a can of worms. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rick. Yeah, r- raise chickens and s- chickens and hens. Chickens and yeah, galaxy. What's the difference? Chickens oh, and hens. I love and good, I love a good chicken and some chips. All mixing. <laughs> I, I think Everton survives, but I, I don't. I, it's very yeah. strange. Was, they had eight top eight finishes this century. Like they were that club. I think that that club that you just think they don't feel right going down. Even we understood Newcastle agree, and, yeah. and going down and up, down and up. For Lampard, I, managers sacked by two clubs in the Premier League in under three years, they usually want a change of scenery. But I don't – how bad do you want to manage? Did you sort of get pushed into it, or is it in your blood now? Um, I, I'm not sure. Is it? Is it, you know, a, a mid-table team in Italy, Spain? Is it even America? We don't have a lot of big names. The MLS quality's gone up. Colin, you and I have talked about this, but there's really Phil Neville as a as a name, and then there's everybody else, a lot yeah. of nameless, faceless managers. Lampard would change that. I don't know. Yeah, we never know. David? Yeah, don't, don't, don't forget about Wayne Rooney. Waz is over there as well. But um, first and foremost, big shout out to Tom Banks for those points. Uh, what's next for Everton? What's next for Frank? The championship for both of them. Mm. Uh, championship where exactly for Frank? I'm thinking Reading. I think the Northern experiment hasn't quite worked out. So I think he's going to want to come I think Reading is south. quite Norse for Frank Lampard. <laughs> 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 he's making his way downtown yeah. do you think like if you if you sort of had that whole career where football's been the biggest thing in your relationship and then you go straight into management I think there is a point where your personal life goes right no yeah right I think so. he plays a big part uh, right anyway a uh, quickie one for you here 68% of fans polled on pro cycle stats say Lance Armstrong should never get his titles back now <laughs> that's obviously not the story 32% think he should Right, including Lance Armstrong, who voted That's in the insane. poll. You absolute <laughs> muppet. No. Anyway, uh, when have you thought, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, who's surprised? You remember the picture he took just after being caught with all his yellow jerseys oh in the frames? God. Tweeted it out, just chilling. <laughs> and it was definitely him that's voted. We yeah, he's he said, voted. Oh, my God. Yeah, if he didn't, if he didn't, sue the BBC. Um, he might well do that. Or, or, the, in, or the independent production record, company, yeah. right? Well, I didn't write record, it. His track record suggests he might I didn't just write do that. it. I didn't write it. I'm not liable. Uh, David, what's your answer for this? Oh, listen, someone must have his IP address because I don't know how we know that for sure. But um, he allegedly is... voted himself. He may not. I'm just, have. I'm just and if trying... he didn't, then fair play to the guy. I'm, fair play to I'm him. I'm just trying not to implicate myself here. But listen, I'm going with Cristiano Ronaldo in his entire Piers Morgan interview. Uh, Listen, of course, the jacuzzi and the chefs are the reasons to blame for you not uh, for you walking out of that game. Uh, it must have been diarrhea, mustn't it? You know what I mean? It must have been the chefs. That's the reason why you left early. Uh, that entire interview was just like, yeah, of course, you're going to mm. say that, mate. You're, you're, you're not playing good. Yeah. Well, of course, you're going to say that. You would say that, wouldn't you, Maisie? <laughs> huh? It does remind me of um, like when I started in comedy. Obviously, none of us had any like quotes to put on our posters. And uh, I remember like another comedian just going, I just get a quote from my friends and suddenly it made sense because around all the open mic nights you see people putting on their flyers funniest guy in the world this guy's going to be massive and actually you just would read like the name under and it would be like the, the best mate so I started doing it with mine going Maisie Adams the next best thing Patrick Fuller Patrick Fuller is a guy from my uni <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Honestly, yeah. it would say the next yeah. Catherine Ryan, Patrick Fuller. <laughs> they, they they were the original sort of like you know once you got oh they they got great reviews on Trustpilot. Yeah, oh, they've, yeah. got, they've got great Google reviews or whatever it is. That is yeah. the originals, the 100%. poster quotes. Yeah. Magnificent. <laughs> yeah, Patrick Fuller. As long as it's a name that sounds like it could be a journalist, right? Yes. Even a yes. Yeah. It makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Love Ra- it. Radio I'm... Five Alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, John, what have you got for this? So I'm going to go Pierre Emerick Aubameyang on yeah. this one. Rewind to last summer when he signed for his latest club, Chelsea. Remember them? He does actually yeah. still play for yeah. them. He's had a bit yeah. of a non-scoring, yeah. Yeah. non-time for them since. And he said at the time, what did he say? I'm so proud to be yeah. a blue. The mood is very good at the moment. I'm feeling good. I was welcomed by all my teammates and staff. Six months later, 
I think he might just be on his bike before yeah. the end of January. Yeah. Uh, Greg, finish this round for me. Yeah, I mean, it, athletes and managers, they, they drive us crazy with what they won't say. They'll, they'll never say, you know, for a team that cut them or traded them, well, it's a revenge game for me. I can't wait to get them out there. They never do that in a major football tournament. Would you rather play the Netherlands next or would you rather play uh, Chile? You know the answer when, it, when you're moving on. It, it, I think it drives me crazy anytime a manager says about a squad, new manager comes in, we don't need massive changes. They never say that. Yeah. Eric Ten Hag was taking it the first three weeks at Man United this fall. He played it so smart, and he did say that. He's not going to diss on Harry Maguire. He's not going to talk about Ronaldo, but look what he's done. It's a totally different mentality, totally different shift. You know, they've shifted shape, they've toned, they've everything compared to what he inherited. So I, it, it's a shame they can't say what they really mean, but, and that's why we gravitate to the Mourinho's and whatnot yeah. that'll just that have no they filter. And say Tenog's it. played this smart. Uh, I stopped listening to you when you said Chile. Um, Chile? And then it Not just Chile, stuck in my head of like... like I was, whoa, no, I was talking Chile. about lunch. I wasn't talking about the country. Uh, <laughs> Would you rather play Netherlands or have lunch? Uh, on this day in Fighting Talk history, right, was the fourth straight Saturday the Fighting Talk was off air in 2006 because it was replaced by a show called The Rumour Mill, hosted by Steve Bunce. Uh, the following week, season three resumed with a new Northern Irish host, which turned out disastrously. <laughs> But Steve always likes it when we mention the rumour mill. So I just wanted to say that before we get on to the game changer. <laughs> Five points for one of you, none for the rest of you. And it is all about this. Um, there are no keener royal family watchers than the Fight and Talk riders. That's why we're never on on Christmas Day. They're always uh, at Sandringham. Of course. Anyway, uh, they were fascinated to read that Prince Joe King Charles will not be wearing the traditional garb for his coronation, which got them thinking, what have been the unconventional bits of sporting kit that have been game changers? Could that question be any longer? That, yeah. it, it, could, I mean, that's I unbelievable, right? <laughs> I, oh, I was, I, I was like, getting yeah. seriously worried. Right. Right. Where is this one? It's lonely. Oh, no. Right. I've missed right. it. That was as long as a loser speech in modern day tennis. <laughs> what, seriously, what's that about? When did losers speak for so long? When's that a thing? It's not the job of the loser to thank the sponsors and the ball boys and the umpires. And that you don't get to thank your management when you're runner up. You just you just get to go up and go well done for winning, thanks bye. Right? That's what is going on He's with sport again. these days. I was so angry. You're so angry. And it's nothing against the runner-up in Australia. No, but it's across everything. It happens in <laughs> snooker and darts. No, you lost. Say two lines and have a Coke and a smile. <laughs> right, anyway. What was, was the question? Was some grape juice. Let me repeat it. Oh, really? There's no keener royal family watchers. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the unconventional bits of sporting kit that have been game changers? Greg Brady. You got me thinking. That would make the Oscars and the Baptist more interesting. Send the losers up to talk about why they oh, didn't win. That the would be four amazing. That it would, would be, be great. brilliant. Yeah. And the winner is Top Gun Maverick, but first from <laughs> Avatar Way of Water. <laughs> Um, all right, Colin, you see enough Major League Baseball up close, and I can't imagine this with cricket the same way. In 1941, oh, they God. invented the batting helmet. They made the batting helmet happen for me. Can you imagine stepping in there? How they used to step in there? Yeah. No batting gloves. They both they wear no. gloves on both hands no. now, not like golf where you have, have it on one hand. There was no batting helmet. I mean, pitchers were still throwing 90 miles an hour. Can oh, you imagine getting one off the head? Without that helmet on, now it's Colin. They wear Kevlar. They yeah. wear they wear chest protectors and elbow, uh, and and the and like the tennis sleeves. They wear everything. They're they're in, they've got body armor. It's like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome when they go to bat. Now it's changed everything. It's so true. I mean, you think about what you used to have to face um, yeah. with absolute no padding whatsoever. Ever, um, Maisie, what have you got in terms of these yeah. uh, sporting kits that, that have been makes game me think changer? of you know, like how in F1 they've got the halos now. How did they ever not have the halo? That's right. mad, mm. just like driving yeah. around at that yeah. speed. Yeah, um, my kit is something I, I don't know what purpose it serves, but it must serve a purpose because everyone's doing it now in football. All the lads are now wearing these like sort of sports bras. Oh, yes, well, they weren't wearing them before. No. It's quite a recent thing, yeah. they must serve something. It has, it I has get a in the women's, in the back. it yeah. has what in the back. Like a little 
yeah. something that counts like their steps their and, steps all, and that. all that. Yeah. And what I thought you said a miles. chakra, Shrek like as in <laughs> <a> chakra. <laughs> it's to do with their energies. <laughs> Harman's been warming his crystals before happen. coming on. Now you've said it, but <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It's so the when they they there's some some guy with a trendy haircut and and yeah. um, packages on his computer. That's not a criticism, but they all do have really nice haircuts. They tend to be younger, <laughs> and they take that away, right? And then they are able to know where the player was in the pitch. Did they run into their position? Oh, so it's, it's only yeah. for tracking like them. GPS. Well, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, rather yeah, than, yeah. Rather than actually, yeah. it, it's doing nothing but, for their pectorals. No, no, basically. no, it's no, no. doing nothing for anything. I've just never honest. looked at a Premier League football and thought, is moves need to be more right, control? Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the Which weird, is why yeah. I was so shocked yeah. with this. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the weird thing about it is, in the 70s, they could have really done with that. Like, that could have been invented earlier. But it is... It, it's a very good answer because it is it, it is unconventional mm. compared there to what. There must be a better way uh, of tracking in, the players yeah. than sticking them no, in. No, no, it's really good. It's what really every nice. girl starts off in yeah. puberty. It's amazing. <laughs> Tracks every training yeah. session, every bit of data. Stats I always think, though, right? Astonishing. If you fall on your back, it must hurt, right? If you've got a, like a like having a mic <laughs> pack, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It must hurt. Anyway, who one person has an answer? I'm guessing John. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, that is right. Actually, you, uh, right. Okay. This I'm going to go right. Um, sticky socks, non-slip socks. What? Because I tell you what, if you watch football this weekend, let me int- let me introduce you to a little trade secret. Yeah. Lo- almost half the players will have all that white tape at the bottom of their shin pads. Oh yeah. Because guess what they do? They cut off the bottom of their socks, right? Which don't, you know, their club socks don't really um, don't stick. And basically, they put on these non-stick, uh, sorry, sticky socks, which then allows them so they don't slip when they dribble. So hold on a second. It's the state's... It's almost like a little bit of a trade You mean slipping their own secret. shoe? Yeah. How so much room is there to you, slip you in go, a shoe? You go so fast and you dribble and so at such a yeah. speed that basically you need... Legal? That you can extra slip extra over in your own yeah. shoes. You look, you look at how many players this weekend when you're watching all the FA Cup ties... So basically, wow. you have all this little tape and you've got all these... Are you saying, like, socks. footballers are wearing leg warmers now instead of socks? And then they put... The, they, convert, <laughs> they are leg warmers by... Socks not loose in the Premier League. Pretty much. Not right. every player will do it, but a hell of a lot will do. <laughs> well, well never. Yeah. Wow. I, your, I found it absolutely... The amount of money abs- that goes into kids and yeah. they can all be sat in the changing rooms with a set of scissors right. doing GCSE yeah, textiles. Right. Yeah. Have so, a look this weekend. So, I guarantee you a fair chunk of, all, all, of players will be doing it this So Mario Balotelli was actually ahead of the game. Miles is. Yeah. So, so this, that's the weird thing about it then. For all that stuff that they do, what a weird thing for like a Nike or an Adidas or a Puma or whatever not to have invented yet. Like it seems so obvious. Sticky socks. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, sticky socks. Yeah, yeah they're probably improving yeah. the tech, but... Oh, I feel oh, sorry for Maisie because go. Maisie had the points until that. Uh, I've got to give them... Oh, the really? Job. My yeah, sports yeah. bras losing out to sticky oh, socks? yeah. I mean, God's sake. Did you see like the response of everyone here? Like, no, they're not wearing half socks. <laughs> I never knew that. I mean, that's a fantastic. Let's let's do the scores as we stand at the moment. So uh, that means that, that, that uh, everyone, uh, it's weird actually, right? The bonus points is what's made a difference because Greg and Maisie have 21 points each. David would add 21, but you got the three point hallelujah for question two. You're on 24. John, you would add 20, but you just get the five points. You're on 25. Wow. wow. But the main thing is I want you to take away is we didn't miss those speeches from the Australian Open. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The NFL playoffs continue with the final four playing this Sunday and the road to the Super Bowl in Glendale, Arizona, February 12th. Greg Brady on commentary, no less. Uh, Mm, Obviously not on American TV in the main thing. Come on. I mean, for us. Uh, Right. The two matchups, so tight, so unpredictable. It's so close between the Philadelphia Eagles and San Francisco 49ers. And of course, in the Kansas City Chiefs, versus uh, Greg's pick, the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, what are the other sport? <laughs> what are the other sporting genuinely too close to calls? And NFL deserves a shout out, by the way, for eight. Is it eight out of the last ten Super Bowls? At least one by a mm. different team. That's what happens when you divide the TV money exactly between uh, the thirty-two teams. Anyway, anyway, uh, Greg, you start this one for me. As as I say, you're on the commentary this weekend. Well, we just had a brilliant World Cup final, um, but obviously France and Argentina, was all, they almost split even odds, but we've had a lot of World Cup finals like that. And France-Italy, the famous Zidane headbutt match, here's a fun fact. They were actually ranked sixth France, seventh Italy coming into the tournament. They barely were in that first pot 
uh, when they drew the mm-hmm. car, when they drew the uh, the balls. Now neither were big favorites coming in. Neither lost a group stage match, but going into the final, France Italy, it was essentially even odds, and yeah. we'll still never know, right? We'll still never know if Zidane doesn't get that red card. Does it go the way it goes for Italy? Not sure. Yeah, not an easy question. This one, David. Uh, I am going uh, the current relegation battle. Yeah. I think right yeah. now the Premier League table, mm. <clears throat> when you look between from 14th down to 20th, there's, there's just one game in it. There's just three points in it so far mm. with most most of those teams playing 20 games. I think oh. it's 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 too close to call. I don't yeah. like it. He's got it up on his screen. I can I'm, see Leeds there with the little red arrow <laughs> down. Yeah. On. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the fact he's got a screen. Turn your screen off, David, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know during that answer I typed into the sign box trap door for some reason feeling like the 1980s cartoon narrated by Terry Wogan's theme tune would be on the sign effects for fight and talk what have I become <laughs> uh, John what's your answer to this so we had the hand of God didn't we with Maradona yes. but it, this one has to be the foot of Mitoma yeah. I mean it, honestly if there was a time mm. to call then I'm yet to see it Japan, Spain in the World Cup finals, the final knockout game. Everything was dependent on this game, and I was in the sta- I was in the stadium that night, oh, and yeah. it, it was ju- I mean it was just astonishing. They played it, we played it on the big screen. Thought, well, that's miles out. He's not they're gonna, not going to let that stand. But somehow Brighton's Japanese player Kari Matoma got the ball back from the byline, crossed it in. Japan score and beat Spain. Calls you know. A, a huge, huge upset, and no one could quite understand why it, why it actually stood. But yeah. if you see the circumference of the ball, then you can. Nice there one. you can. Yeah, it's it, so yeah. close, so it, close. Exactly. Uh, right, Mizzy. The circumference of the ball. <laughs> yes. No, but it's true. We no, for, no. for ages we looked at it at our own yeah. angle, right? Yeah. There's so many things that referees could stick for in the eighties. They shouldn't have. Uh-huh. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I mean, some of us, David, we don't like to focus on the negatives, like the relegation battle of some of the best teams in the world. Uh, we like to look in a positive way. Uh, I'm thinking it's it's got to be the, the championship playoffs, right? Because yes. at the moment, in the top half, in the in the top ten, there's only three points between third place and tenth place. So it's a very very exciting. One. Yeah. I think that, every year, yeah, it's yeah, got to be. It, it's got to be that. There's, right? there's a couple of teams that haven't been up in ages, and they're under parachute payments, and I have such admiration for them because yeah. they hold on you know teams like Preston North End have no right on, on what they have to still be sitting eighth or ninth or in with a chance with four or five games left and there's a few teams like that mm-hmm. and they get all my admiration yeah, yeah. in the second tier for even making a competitive but it gets there it's so long a season it just gets there in the end where it's so so hard to do it for the whole season it's so hard to make that break up once yeah. and I, and then the sky would be the limit for them uh, right that's everyone yes okay mm-hmm. so here we go let's do the mock the week Ryan we, we could, yeah, probably going to go mock the week any other business uh-huh. than any other Defensible might fit another one in, you never know. Um, but let's not push it, let's not push it. Uh, if this is the answer, what is the question? It's as simple as that. John Cross, not for sale. Todd Bowley on the phone, that's the answer he gets. And then Chelsea, <laughs> then add on another 20, 25 million, and it's a done deal. Ah, uh, this is Everton, according to their owners. Uh, Greg, 10 out of 10. Well, at St. Mary's Stadium today, that'll be the uh, amount and the percentage of fans when they host Blackpool, 23rd in the championship, saying, are we playing in their league next year? (laughs) (laughs) How many goals and how many games has Rashford scored since the World Cup? David, not living in reality. Uh, What do you think of Arsenal fans who believe they're winning the league this season? (laughs) <laughs> uh, McElroy on Patrick Reid did you see the throne of the tea thing is it like the yeah. least a- a- aggressive thing you've ever seen in your life like come on it's very bitter like, isn't it yeah. yeah it's not like he put it between his fingers and stabbed them in the leg with it it'd be like he literally just tossed the tea like I'm trying to think what else is like less offensive you want to back like, off or else I'll <laughs> toss my tea yeah. if you say one more thing I'm going to throw my dart flight at you do you know what I mean Right, anyway, uh, Maisie, £630,000. 
Uh, based on minutes played alone, how much of Jack Grealish's one hundred million pound transfer fee has he actually justified? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what it is? It's the value of a watch that Ronaldo was given in Saudi Arabia. Oh, seriously, one hundred thirty thousand pounds. How do you manage that? Listen, we'll get this in only because it's the weird. It's the best stroke worst question we've had this season. Happy birthday, Henry the Seventh. He was born on this day in fourteen fifty seven. He was king from fourteen eighty five. He only had one wife, unlike the next one who had six. That's all I've got. Anyway, who is the Henry the Seventh of sport? I won't be scoring this round because I don't know who Henry the Seventh is. Uh, so let's just do it. Um, just Greg. It, it's been brought up already. He's been brought up already. Lance Armstrong. Could be right. I mean, honestly, right. like, and I'm talking about during his competitions. Really interesting guy with the cheating and the press conferences and the passive aggressiveness yeah. and the Cheryl Crow marriage. Yeah. But we don't know why because we don't watch cycling. Yeah. You know, you, like what you you know what? No one sits around and says, you know what? Tour de France stage Lance really excels at the fifth. <laughs> Nobody does that. It's the ultimate sports snob yeah. thing to talk Tour de France when yeah. it's on. But we really only put it on in the background when we're mowing the garden or we're, or, or we're reading a book. We don't watch it. Yeah. We all know that. This. I was going to make stuff up. Henry the Seventh, big fan of polka dots. Great answer, Greg. <laughs> Maisie. Uh, Henry the Seventh. I'm guessing is Henry the or Seventh plays into it. What, what is it? Beckham, Ronaldo, Lewis yeah. Hamilton. He's got seven S- championships. Seven. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Right. Good. Thanks for being honest. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. And it gives me a chance not to pick in the, the final because you're Who's the Henry the Seventh close. of sport? I know. Who cares? Great question. Right. Right, it either is the best or worst question depending on who you are, right? I'd rather be like, who was the best sportsman out of all of the old kings of England? (laughs) Right, right. Uh, David. Yeah, well, I look at I look at this question like who. Obviously, nobody knows who Henry the Seventh. Well, hope you looked at the question. But everybody like, is. But, the but the, the way you're sport? saying it is like, all right, but who, everyone knows who Henry the Eighth is. Obviously, who's Henry the Seventh's uh, son? Right. So I look at it from that perspective, and I said, if you replace wives with money and success, then I'm talking <laughs> Floyd Mayweather Senior. Is the Henry the Seventh to Floyd Mayweather Jr.? See, that's what we there wanted. That's there why it's go. a good yeah. question, right? He delivered massively there. That was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Crossy. I'm think I'm. I've taken it as the as the the predecessor didn't get the infamy okay, infamy yeah, of the yeah, successor. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to go Nigel Pearson because the guy who gets forgotten yeah. in the best ever oh. Premier League title success oh, okay. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, he Very built good. the title winning team for Claudio Ranieri to go and enjoy with pizza and dilly ding yeah. dilly dong. Next week, who's the Charles II uh, of sport? <laughs> Is there a Charles II? Is he the Charles II? That was a bad example, wasn't it? Let's not be controversial. Who's the Queen Victoria sport? Tune in next week, 11 o'clock. <laughs> or... <laughs> if there's speeches after a big sporting event, half past eleven. <laughs> uh, Twenty seconds each for your uh, for your any other business. Uh, what have you got for me, Greg? What's on your mind? Well, the other day it snowed here, Colin. I mean, we're raising a soft generation of kids. I've got two of them. I know how soft they are. So they cancelled the <laughs> they cancelled the school buses in the morning during exams. We're in exams for the first semester, the fall semester. <laughs> You can't cancel the school buses during exams. <laughs> Agreed. You, like, you're putting oh. 25, oh 30 God. parents on the road in oh. their cars. What's going to cause more Ooh. chaos and disorder yes. on the highways and byways? One yellow school bus that can't <laughs> stop in the snow? Love it. 25 or 30 parents that have to move their mornings around. It's at a last, joke. At last, a modern-day parent has called the kids soft on national radio. It's a <laughs> great day to be alive. Maisie, what's your any other business? Uh, I, I would just really like Leeds United to sign a blooming defender. Oh, no. Yeah. No, we've got Wobo and that's great, but yeah. we need we need one more. Good. Please. I'm glad that was as bad as it was because I didn't want to put you into Thank the you final so much. in your day. You. I'm just no in a bad I'm, I'm in a bad mood now. That's good. Uh David. Uh, I'm going with sneaker raffles or trainer raffles for those uh, in the UK, of course. But why can't I just buy why can't I just buy my trainers? Like why can't I just go to the shop, yeah, and go and buy them? No, you can't. You have to enter a raffle, right. pay some money, and maybe you're lucky enough to have the chance to pay. Sorry, you went to a raffle. Sh- no, you yeah. have, no, no, that's what it is yeah. now. You, you, yeah, can't, yeah. you can't pick up a pair of Jordan Big ones. You got to no. pick up a pair of Jordan ones. That's got to be one of the most archaic ways have, of getting trainers. You have to though. enter a raffle to get right. Chappers. To like a tomboy. Chappers, I'll have to wait because I need to tell this story. You see these bad boys here? Yeah. These not, not, what are they? Jordan ones. Jordan ones. Right. So I went to the shop to get it, right? And it's it's like all these eighteen year olds with uh with uh with with Vaseline, basically little Vaseline's in their pocket and little conferences. And it's clear you've kept them for your mates in the stock room. Yes. Right? And it was only until I said to one, I know you're keeping them for your mates in the stock room, right? 
go get me them, right? It, that I was able to it's buy them. Yeah. Right? It's, 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 it's what a world it is it's now. Well, oh, you just had to say that. And yes. then he was like, sorry, actually. Yeah. A, yeah, let let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He gave in quick. Trader shopping is a panorama waiting to happen. It is. Yes. Oh, my day. Yes. baby. Let's do it. Yes. Right. John. Okay. Well, I got this one from from my breakfast this morning because I I went for a for a cheeky bacon sandwich and a cup of coffee and it's honestly it's the people that sit that go into places coffee shops or all alike basically they go and sit down they let them their mate or whoever go in order and they clog up the table so people like me who play it straight cannot sit down with if you food. had someone ah! with you you would send no, them as well. no no it's as simple as that <laughs> final scores and fight and talk today despite that monstrosity of in any other business John had a cushion so he gets in there wow. with uh, with 41 points he'll take on David Alorca who sits on uh, 40 points there so there you go Amazing and Greg on 38 points each so there, there you go yeah, who's winning the first win? Have you to win yet? Yes. Yeah, oh, you've yeah. had one, John. No. No. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Because of this. Because of this. Right. Here we go. Hiya, <laughs> okay. hiya, Chappers. You all right? Uh, I'm, I'm great. Good. Colin. good. You yeah, can, you can pick the winner. Right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Right. Um, <laughs> that one's definitely to to you. Uh, David, so we're definitely doing that for John Cross. I'll just do this one. Um, right, John, here's yours. I, John Cross, will donate my fighting talk fee today to any Premier League club to spend wisely on foreign footballers. Oh, they need it, don't they? They're so hard up. There's no TV cash about. They're, they're, they're cash strapped. They need every every penny that they can get to get over the line. Because honestly, they're such good people in the community, aren't they? The Premier League clubs. They do it all for the fans. It's all for the good of their health, basically. They just want to put on the best show possible. So if I can help them, if I can help them buy a centre forward. That's one of your Ooh, best. Not bad. Not right. bad. Here we go, Alorca. I, David Alorca, I'm actually embarrassed for Ronaldo uh, for accepting such a cheap watch. I, David Alorca, am absolutely embarrassed by Cristiano Ronaldo for accepting such a cheap watch. I mean, for all the money that this guy has, you know what I mean? Half a billion, half a billion followers on Instagram. He accepted a watch for 630 something million. Yeah. That's, unbel that's, that's unbelievable. 630 something thousand. Come on, listen. Well, that was, uh, well listen. Oh. History is upon us here, choppers. You get to make the decision. Are you going to double? You, you could double cross the cross here. It's up to you. Well, just before I decide on, on the winner. Yeah. Can I just say, in a in a shortened show where yeah. you presumably had to cut questions, yeah. how did the Henry the Seventh question I know. stay? Thank you, thank you, Chappers. It's a really good point. It, 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 it does allude to the standard of the questions that that it's gets birthday, in. Some birthday. of those yeah. were a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Some good thoughts. Yeah. I mean, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. At, at quarter past eleven, we were asked, "Did we want to come on early, yeah. or did we want Fighting Talk to come on and we went, we go late?" And yeah. we thought, no. Well, partly because I wasn't in the building at the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we thought, we'll, we'll let Fight Talk go late. Yeah. And now you've done Henry VII and the trainer's right. story. When we did the Henry VII, did yeah. you then go, my God, what are we going to talk about between three and five? <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my whole, my whole half two to three o'clock build up with Deno. It's completely it. gone. I love it. Well, listen, if anything um, does happen with you and you need yeah. to fill any time, I'm, I'm can going you, straight can down you the Can you tell me route. why people who lose are allowed to make speeches that long these days? It happens in all sports. <laughs> Sport. It's nothing against the runner-up of the Australian well, Open. No. It's not it, happy, It's in every it? sport now. I know. And not like, happy. Whatever <laughs> happened to the, the runner-up just going, thanks for having me, yeah. I yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, well done. And also, the idea of, the idea of you of us giving you your show and us coming on late was that we didn't do a handover, so we've yeah. knackered that. And I've got the build up to the to the, the FA Cup ties to come, and I've got yeah. to fit. We're, we're replaying those Australian Open speeches as well because they're just <laughs> great sporting content. Uh, John, John, John Cross is the winner because yeah, I completely forgot yeah, what that. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Unbelievable yeah. time. Oh, oh, sorry, oh. David. Sorry, just before you go, mm. just for everyone who downloads the podcast, mm. there will not be a podcast extra because we. We stayed on a bit later, and and I didn't do the parking oh. differently. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> does that mean we does that mean we lose an Edward the Second anecdote? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sad day for podcast. Thank you very much.